next talk is will we'll teach you how to remove obfuscation from your code using um, optimized algorithms. Um, and the talk will be held by Van Kost Vladimirovich. He works on information security, consulting, and creation. And I ask you to welcome him. Uh, 
these frameworks enable you to analyze assembly code and uh, develop algorithms uh, that are uh, uh, that are uh, good for removing obfuscations, analyzing code, uh, doing code transformations, and stuff like that. There are some uh, tools developed by uh, universities in the US, like uh, Vine and Web, uh, but they are written in OCaml, and uh, I don't know how many of you here write OCaml, but it's not easy to uh, extend them and integrate them into LIDAR. Uh, it's a fun thing to do, if this is your very fun. Uh, and uh, you can uh, speed things up. Analyze graphics code on a daily basis, uh, uh, you traditionally encounter many similar obfuscations. Uh, uh, removing them by hand every time is difficult and uh, unpractical, so developing an uh, automated tool is uh, just a logical thing to do. And reuse code for some other projects. You can reuse uh, painting. Uh, algorithms for things like fuzzing, uh, uh, vulnerability research, and etc. <coughs> Project goal: to rewrite uh, rewrite code to fix the assembly representation problems. So, if you have a assembly listing, you would like to uh, join all the code that is associated with a specific function and rewrite it to another segment. In that segment, you can exploit uh, all traditional uh, code analysis tools and plugins like, I don't know, the compilation plugin for Tyler uh, <coughs> or uh, your own algorithms that work on traditional code. Uh, and also, uh, you can uh, harvest the benefits of uh, GraphView and stuff like that. And of course, uh, in the end, you can uh, uh, run the unobfuscated version on, uh, with your emulator on directly on your computer. Uh, next. Uh, Goal idea was to build a framework to analyze instruction painting and semantics. So uh, you have your algorithms that work on assembly. <laughs> we like to uh, somehow lift the assembly representation to something that uh, does contain all the hidden operand uh, flag painting that isn't visible uh, while uh, looking at the assembly listing. And uh, you like to automate this process uh, as much as possible. Uh, extend it for automatic deobfuscation. So, uh, after you have a basic framework that allows you to analyze an instrument sample code, uh, you can write your own uh, transformations and uh, 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 transform that assembly into something that removes uh, all the unnecessary stuff that you're not interested in. And uh, in the end, expose the API that allows everyone to use it and understand it. Uh, so, the first problem is this assembly. Uh, main, uh, so, uh, while this assembling, our basic unit is a function. Uh, function, because it's a logical unit that allows you to somehow group all the code that is responsible for uh, one uh, function of a program. Uh, function is also very important structure in IDA. It enables IDA to be, uh, better and richer data in column analysis. So, uh, which manifests uh, as ability to use graph view uh, or even the compilation tools like hex rays. So, uh, the first thing is to uh, just uh, scroll down the code and reconstruct as much uh, uh, possible code and build and reconstruct the whole function. Uh, function representation should have all instructions visible. So, uh, one problem, uh, and I'll uh, show it in the next slide, is uh, just uh, uh, jumping into middle of the instructions, hiding uh, instructions in data, and in such cases, you, uh, in the assembly listing, uh, it's not always possible to easily identify such hidden instructions. Uh, problems for uh, people reading the code are basic block scattering. In the assembly listing, if you don't have a function, uh, if you scatter small blocks around the address space, it's very hard to navigate if you don't uh, have available graph view. Uh, this is not a real problem for this sample, but for human analysis code. Take paths uh, and in conditional jumps that lead to broken disassembly code, and this also breaks either ability to reconstruct functions. Uh, and uh, the last one is instruction overlapping. So if you have jumps that uh, <coughs> jump in the middle of another instruction, it's, also, it's only possible to show one instruction, and the other one will be hidden.
Uh, and this is also a problem that is not uh, a real problem for this sample, but for human analyzed code. So this is an example of a uh, conditional path that leads to broken disassembly and uh, in turn uh, disables either to uh, create a function for this code. You can uh, notice the red uh, addresses. Uh, it's a sign that uh, this code is not uh, associated with any function. Uh, in this case, so you have... Uh, you can see... Okay, uh, in this case, uh, you have a, a broken path that leads to uh, unrecognized instruction uh, at address AFF2. So what would you like to do is, if you happen to come across some uh, opcodes that uh, either cannot resolve, uh, you, you either replace them with a return instruction, and that way uh, you can uh, enable either to build a graph uh, from scratch, or you can replace them with some uh, protected uh, ring, uh, ring zero instruction, and uh, after that instruction you can uh, add another uh, return instruction. Uh, instrumenting uh, with uh, 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 this also can be used as a, a measure to break debuggers. Uh, so when you, when a program, if it really takes this fake path, uh, it will raise an exception and uh, can use it uh, for for uh, uh, detecting the debugger, stuff like that. So, uh, if we replace the fake instructions with red, and uh, we add comment to the code when we rewrite it, so we know what was changed from the original uh, from the original disassembly, and you can uh, then analyze it like you usually do. Uh, this is a code that happens after you replace the return instruction at the mesh address, and uh, now we can notice that uh, this code was associated with the function. Uh, next thing too uh, is uh, instruction overlapping. So uh, the assembly graph should contain all instructions. Uh, you, you're not only interested uh, in instructions that are shown on the, uh, shown in the assembly view, but also the other uh, instructions that are embedded inside this uh, multi-byte. Uh, 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 this is the first screen. Uh, you can notice the jump that jumps in the middle of itself, uh, and the rest of the code is hidden. Uh, next step is to undefine this instruction and continue disassembling from the uh, next uh, <coughs> code. In this case, this is the jump EAs. EAs. Uh, in the end, when you rewrite the code, this is what you get. You get the jump, the jumps uh, to uh, next instruction, and that instruction is uh, uh, shown as uh, it should be. This is before the, any op uh, optimizations are uh, done, so in the end you, uh, you, will, uh, you will lose the jump instruction and have only the code that matters. Uh, next is a function representation inside the developed framework uh, is a graph. Graph is a very useful data structure that enables you to uh, just express the control flow of uh, code. Uh, uh, so, Function is represented as a graph. A graph cont uh, contains nodes. Each node in graph is represented as an instruction. So you can uh, model uh, the control flow of uh, every instruction and have branches uh, associated with each node. Uh, edges represent the control flow, and this either this assembly edge is used for particle code. This proved this somewhat. Uh, not exactly the optimal solution using either for this, but I'll discuss later uh, some troubles associated with this. And that first search is used to explore all the, all the possible uh, assembly view uh, of uh, code. So, uh, each node, uh, as I mentioned, is represented as an instruction. Instruction controls uh, all information that is necessary uh, when you analyze uh, each instruction. So it's uh, its origin uh, address, its mnemonic, its disassembly, prefix, operands, uh, opcode, operand types, and etc. All this is uh, just translated from IDA to uh, the framework. Uh, instruction for, uh, information is populated from two sources. Uh, information directly from IDA, 
uh, when you can use uh, get name, get operand, get operand type, get operand value, and build the instruction representation in memory. Uh, this, this has some uh, uh, bad side effects. Uh, and another one, uh, another way to collect this information is information derived from get uh, this awesome uh, function. Uh, each instruction pays uh, both representations and both, uh, and both uh, uh, information from the both sources. Uh, I'll discuss uh, where, where each source is used and why. Uh, so, side story, uh, mnemonics differ. If you use either get mnem uh, function, you'll get a basic uh, mnemonic uh, associated with that instruction. So, for example, if you have a, a stos d instruction, a get mnem will return stos. Uh, when you uh, try to uh, analyze semantics of stos, it's not the same as stos d. Uh, the sizes of the operands are different, and uh, you lose uh, much of the information associated with semantics of instruction. So, uh, in cases like this, uh, and if you uh, analyze the semantics of instructions, you are uh, you'd like to have uh, uh, this assembly of uh, get this awesome instruction. Uh, this instruction gives the the representation that is given to you on the screen. So get this SM and get um, name uh, differ. And you should know, notice this uh, if you analyze semantics of instructions. A uh, special example of this is get name uh, for xlet instruction. xlet is just, uh, xlet has two syntaxes. First uh, has a, a, a associated operand as noted uh, in the upper opcode. Uh, so it has, uh, so you can pass it uh, uh, some uh, operand, uh, and uh, it, you will have this assembly that says uh, xlet uh, m8. Uh, another view is to use uh, the different syntax. This is xlet b. Uh, uh, this instruction has uh, uh, associated the hidden uh, operand. So if you uh, use either to analyze this code, and you get uh, xlet xlet instruction, you, uh, you will think that you have an uh, operand associated with that instruction. But this is false. Uh, if you run a get operand for the first operand that you should get back, you will get a uh, zero. Uh, you will get an empty string. Uh, but get operand type returns one. So this is a hidden operand uh, that is actually the uh, bottom syntax uh, used. So this is just something to note if you uh, are going to instrument stuff like this. So next thing is functions. Uh, functions uh, is abstracted as a class. Function contains not, uh, all the basic block information pool, uh, plus the control flow information. Control, uh, control flow graph information is important because it enables uh, traversing of uh, control flow and because uh, uh, when modifying control flow uh, you should keep in mind uh, all references. So, so uh, you uh, in the end, you'd like to have uh, the both uh, top-down control flow graph and bottom-up. This way, you can also exploit uh, all the bottom-up algorithms that uh, optimize code. And uh, here are some instruction uh, uh, functions that are exported and that you, you can use to traverse uh, uh, control flow graph and analyze code. Uh, and all the control flow graph optimizations operate on, uh, operate on this class. So they modify control flow graph, and uh, control flow graph is, uh, information is embedded in the uh, function class. Uh, basic block is implemented as linked list. Uh, each instruction, uh, each instruction code instruction is represented as an instruction class that has its prefix, mnemonic operands, and so on. Uh, it stores all the information that is uh, returned from uh, get op uh, star functions, get op value, get op operand, and so on. And uh, also, uh, it contains, instruction contains all the uh, opcodes and operands uh, that are uh, associated with get this SM awesome, uh, instruction. I, in the previous slide, this was discussed in cases when you don't want to use the get name and you want to use get this SM. Awesome. Uh, so, instruction semantics, uh, this is useful, not just for uh, the obfuscation, but for taint analysis. Uh, 
So each instruction has several operands that are visible on the screen. Uh, there are numerous operands that are uh, hidden, and uh, there are flags that are not shown when you uh, use this assembly uh, listing. So, for example, you have uh, emul ECX, uh, and uh, what you get is uh, on the screen you just get that instruction taints the ECX register. Uh, but this is not true. It taints not only ECX, but EDX, EAX, and uh, all the meshed flags. Uh, uh, this information is necessary if you want to do safe optimizations. So, uh, you want to uh, instrument each instruction, all the data it taints. And you cannot forget some uh, flags or uh, other stuff. This is, uh, instruction semantics is also uh, uh, necessary for safe uh, uh, dead code elimination. So, if you have instructions that taint some memory that gets overwritten, you can safely uh, remove them. Around uh, 700 instructions are currently supported, and I use MageGen's XML uh, that contains all the x86, 32-bit, and 64-bit uh, 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 opcodes and uh, all the hidden and uh, regular uh, operands. Um, so, instruction semantics is implemented as taint instruction class. So you, for each instruction, uh, you get uh, taint uh, destinations, sources and destinations. This includes uh, all the operands, hidden and visible, uh, all the flags, uh, modified, uh, read, and uh, uh, set to a constant value. Uh, uh, additional benefits of using the mentioned XML code is uh, uh, that you can uh, instrument side effects. So if you have... Uh, uh, pop instruction, you can also uh, do comparison of uh, opcode and uh, deduce uh, if it uh, increments ESP and by uh, which value. Also you have uh, added value is that you can use it to detect uh, ring zero instructions that are, uh, that exist in the ring three code. So if you know you are analyzing some uh, uh, ring three rootkit, uh, uh, and if you detect some ring zero uh, instructions, you can uh, uh, deduce this automatically from the obfuscator and you can uh, either prune uh, this path or replace it and analyze it. Uh, and tainting information is necessary to perform safe optimization, so, as I already mentioned. Uh, so, how this looks, uh, uh, structure of the framework in uh, memory. You have functions that represent control flow uh, information. You have basic blocks that contain uh, instructions and uh, uh, all the instruction data. You have instruction class that represents each instruction uh, that exists in the disassembly, and at the end, uh, instruction is mapped with its uh, taint uh, source. So, uh, for each instruction, you get exactly taint information that uh, it's associated with it. Uh, now the fun part, optimizations. Uh, after, after you uh, reconstruct your function in the memory uh, and uh, calculate all the taint information for that uh, for each instruction. Uh, you can uh, use the traditional optimization algorithms to remove uh, much of the obfuscated code. Uh, there are uh, four main uh, types of optimizations. Uh, first is control flow reduction. Uh, this is useful when you have like uh, uh, many shredded basic blocks uh, that are scattered across the other space and that are connected with uh, unconditional jumps. So you get fragmented code with, uh, and GraphView shows you a bunch of uh, nodes. Uh, s another uh, control flow optimization is uh, conditional jump uh, reduction. So you have a conditional jump that is uh, basically opaque predicate and uh, the for example, the false path is never taken. So you can automatically prune the whole path, uh, replace the condition jump jump, and uh, contain, uh, continue analysis. Next group is dead code removal, uh, in which you remove all the dead code that is uh, just inserted to slow you down. Uh, third type is heuristic rules. So uh, during analysis, you uh, you build your database of uh, some traditional obfuscations that you can easily uh, remove by short scripts, and uh, you can build your database of such 
obfuscations, import it uh, into optimization algorithm, and use them to automatically remove all the mentioned uh, ob uh, obfuscations. And the last one is constant propagation and folding. Uh, this is still uh, in development and will not be a part of the released, pl released plugin. Uh, in which case uh, you simplify all the uh, instructions that uh, manipulate on data and that use uh, as operands uh, constant values. So, uh, condition jump reductions, uh, conditional paths uh, depend on flag status. Uh, you can use a uh, taint information uh, to get flags uh, on which a particular conditional jump depends. Uh, uh, use a backward algorithm to scan uh, where this uh, flag is set, and uh, you can, uh, with in, in semantic information, uh, you can deduce if this flag is set always, sometimes, or never. Uh, for example, AND uh, always clears the overflow and uh, carry flag, so all the conditional jumps like uh, jump overflow, jump not overflow, jump carry, and so on, uh, always take a single path. So you can prune the other one and uh, just uh, substitute the conditional jump uh, with a regular jump. Uh, this uh, optimization re results in a, smell, a smaller graph and uh, better, more precise disassembly. Uh, because if you prune the fake, uh, fake path, uh, you will not uh, encounter some uh, bad disassembly, unknown opcodes and stuff like that. Uh, and also, a fake paths uh, can uh, be used to break uh, uh, either's function uh, reconstruction algorithm, so you can also use uh, the graph here. Uh, jump merging is a uh, very simple uh, of, uh, op optimization. Uh, if you have two blocks that are connected with jump, and the second block contains only a single reference, you can merge them together. Uh, this increases uh, block size and reduces the uh, control flow graph uh, uh, complexity. Uh, this optimization is uh, very useful if you use uh, uh, data analysis algorithms because uh, bigger blocks uh, enable you to uh, you, uh, uh, enable you to effectively uh, use better optimizations on a single block. So uh, this is a two-stage uh, control flow graph optimization uh, process. Uh, First, you have a conditional jump uh, that points to two blocks. If you can uh, determine that this conditional jump is, uh, in effect, an uh, opaque predicate, uh, you can replace the conditional jump with a regular jump. And uh, in the next stage, you can uh, use optimization, optimizations that uh, remove unnecessary uh, unconditional jumps to just uh, merge the two blocks together. In the end, uh, you get a single block uh, that has uh, uh, very easy and nice uh, control flow structure. Uh, that code optimization is based on uh, tainting information. So every instruction whose execution doesn't modify program final state or control flow is classified as dead instruction. Every instruction in a block in which all taints get overwritten before getting used uh, is uh, effectively an algorithm that you can use to remove uh, obfuscations. Removing is done with the following short algorithm. Uh, there are two uh, rules that uh, I don't uh, currently implement. Uh, that is uh, uh, memory tainting. So uh, memory taint analysis and aliasing problem is a complex uh, one and it's not uh, currently addressed. So uh, if, you, if the code encounters uh, instruction that taints memory, we will leave it uh, just for the sake and, uh, uh, and uh, instructions uh, that change control flow graph uh, also uh, are left out of uh, that code elimination. Uh, for all other instructions, uh, you traverse a basic block and try to find all instructions that don't change program state. Uh, if you determine that uh, is such instruction exists, you just uh, remove the instruction from the basic block and continue analysis. Uh, the last one is rule-based uh, optimization. So uh, there is optimization that isn't automatically uh, removed. Uh, you can just write a script and uh, to remove it. Uh, I think it's 
pretty easy to do it. Here's a simple one that can replace uh, red to jump. So uh, if you have a push address before a return instruction, uh, you can uh, uh, classify it as a jump uh, rather than uh, end of function. Uh, these 10 lines of code uh, are example uh, of such a uh, heuristic rule for optimization. Uh, all the data is abstracted through classes, so it's uh, very easy to modify the control flow, uh, remove instructions, add instructions, modify instructions. Uh, it should be noted that uh, when you modify instructions, uh, all the all the stuff you do in memory, in memory representation of your function, can be exported back and assembled into, uh, into the code. So, this is the last pro process. You have uh, reconstructed your function and optimized it uh, uh, in a classes in memory, and now you want to write it uh, into either database, or export it uh, to some executable code so you can run it and modify it. Uh, so, uh, the basic algorithm is that uh, you will assemble each instruction. Either provides uh, API assemble that is unsupported and uh, very, uh, and has some weird syntax. Uh, you have to be very careful using this. Uh, not all instructions are supported, uh, but uh, for the proof concept uh, and for most of the instructions, uh, this works nicely. Uh, uh, also, I use some uh, uh, custom rules for assembling all the code that uh, it's not supported and uh, for the code that is supported you can rewrite the whole functions into another segment. Okay, now for the demo. Okay, so the first example is uh, binary from DEF CON challenges. Uh, this is a cute binary because it impl implements uh, most of the mentioned uh, uh, obfuscations. You have uh, basic blocks, uh, uh, splitting, uh, code shredding, uh, uh, throwing basic blocks all, of, uh, all around the address space, uh, conditional jumps uh, that contain fake paths, uh, you have uh, uh, dead code uh, and stuff like that. So the first instruction is uh, the first example is uh, code that uh, uh, either cannot uh, create function from, uh, so you can't use a uh, graph view, and uh, it implements some uh, fake paths uh, that uh, that are uh, basically opaque predicates. So uh, set carry uh, sets uh, the carry flag, and uh, so this jump will always happen, and the rest is a uh, fake path. Uh, you can see that uh, if you don't see uh, this yourself, uh, most code here is not, uh, doesn't break this assembly. It looks nice, it uh, looks regular, so it's uh, not easy to detect that uh, it's something, uh, uh, it's fake uh, just because uh, it has a conditional jump here. Uh, to use the plugin, it's uh, enough just to uh, go to uh, the basic address that you want to create a function from and uh, run the plugin. Okay, it's running, running. So uh, then it, uh, when the, all the deobfuscation is done, you are presented with a uh, uh, UI that uh, asks you uh, if you want to write the uh, deobfuscated code back to the database. So you can assemble back all the, uh, all the deobfuscated functions to uh, either database and uh, exploit all the IDA algorithms and the graph view and the plugins that you have yourself made. So we'll just use the standard. This is the size of the segment. So you can uh, write uh, many functions into the same segment and you can call the segment optimized code. So on this side,
So you can see this is the optimized function. Uh, so from all this code, you get only uh, this uh, function. Uh, it removes uh, all the uh, dead code and uh, prunes all the fake paths, uh, merges blocks, uh, uh, removes some uh, heuristic uh, uh, obfuscations. Uh, this code also uses uh, push red obfuscation, so it's also removed uh, from this uh, view. Uh, this is the first example. Uh, another one is uh, several days ago, weeks, uh, on open uh, RCE, uh, someone posted the obfuscation that is based on uh, uh, source code obfuscation. So you have a source code, uh, you can introduce some source code manipulations that add uh, conditional code uh, and that code, uh, and uh, you, uh, you compile the obfuscated source code, and in effect you get uh, obfuscated uh, binary code. Uh, it is also possible to remove this, remove this kind uh, of obfuscation pretty simply. So you have here some very long uh, basic block. Uh, you can just click on the start. Start the optimization. You can see all the, uh, all the dead instructions that are uh, removed. Okay, we'll assemble it. And you get here uh, the you get here the clean code without without all the dead instructions. Here are listed some of the dead instructions that are uh, removed from the assembled version. Uh, you can notice here also that uh, this code uses a lot of uh, uh, constant values and uh, constant uh, uh, instructions. Uh, so this is not currently supported. But it's pretty easy to uh, write uh, the obfuscation algorithm that will uh, also remove uh, all the uh, expressions that use uh, constant values. Okay, this is pretty much for the demo. You can download it and uh, use it. Okay. So, conclusions. Uh, it can remove uh, static obfuscations pretty easily. Uh, uh, you can feed it uh, data for on this assembler, so you get uh, added value over the classical pure uh, static analysis. Uh, you can tool chain this. So you have a disassembler uh, or code instrumentation framework you, you normally use. You can plug it uh, to uh, feed uh, data to uh, the optimization plugin and reconstruct functions based on the executed code. Then you can optimize them and export them back and assemble them into your uh, IDA project. So you can analyze and run the code uh, and modify it uh, from the uh, execution trace. Uh, it's working projects, it has bugs. Uh, currently, uh, most notable bugs are uh, uh, related to assembling uh, in IDA. I plan to switch to the NASM or some other uh, assembler that will handle the, all the instructions better. Uh, if you have uh, ideas, uh, obfuscations that you'd like to see, you can send them. Uh, you can extend, improve, contribute. It's open source, MIT license, so you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, greet some people that helped with this. Uh, Nan, Guan Zdrnya, Tox, Harp, MageGen for his uh, XML data, Rolf Rolls, Olg Noblets, Reddit, Fox, and so on. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? I wonder what happens if uh, this tool is um, processing code that's not really obfuscated, but maybe look like obfuscated. So, so for example, there is this uh, very nice hack in X264 encoder, which uses uh, a double fall through, through code. It jumps into a fu function, 
uh, then uses a call instruction on later code. The later code runs through red instruction back to the original instruction and then it falls through, through the same code. So this looks much like obfuscated code, but it's not. It's a uh, hand-written optimization to save cycles and space. Okay, uh, so all the uh, deobfuscation algorithms uh, should be safe. So uh, I try to uh, modify some uh, rules uh, to minimum. I use uh, code tainting to just get a basic uh, idea of what code does. Uh, uh, because I reconstruct, uh, I associate each instruction to a single function. So if you have a shared block, so you have a block that is shared among several functions, this block will be uh, reconstructed to, uh, uh, each function will be uh, given a private copy of that code. So, uh, if your obfuscations are not really obfuscations and your code runs uh, fine before it was deobfuscated, it should run uh, fine after it was uh, uh, removed some uh, code. So, basically, I, do not, uh, I don't do uh, much heuristic rules that will remove or modify the logic of the program. I just remove the functions and instructions, paths, uh, control flow uh, that, are, uh, that can be proven uh, by uh, Tainting algorithm that uh, it's not used, that or either it's dead code or the conditional jump is, uh, 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 the path in conditional jump is never used. So if your code uh, works, uh, then there's no uh, problem optimizing it. You can just use optimization algorithm to uh, rewrite the code to rewrite the code to another segment and just collect all the scattered information from the address space or the block sharing uh, issues into a single function. Hi, thank you very much for the interesting talk. My question is, uh, I wonder how much the plugin is tied to the x86 architecture and if it's possible to do a variation for, let's say, ARM? So, uh, the tainted algorithms are mainly uh, based uh, for x86 because uh, I have uh, the nice XML representation of the semantics of that architecture. Uh, it is possible to write uh, the same thing, semantics, for another processor and uh, you can feed it uh, nicely into the plugin. Uh, uh, I should mention that you can extend it uh, not just for IDA. If you wrap all the IDA exported functions like get mnemonic, uh, get uh, operand type, get uh, operand value, you can uh, just embed it uh, in uh, debuggers like uh, immunity debugger that has already uh, all the Python code that supports executing Python code. So if you wrap the necessary functions, you can port it to architectures different uh, or uh, different uh, processors and debuggers and stuff like that. Because uh, the currently uh, there are no limits for the number of operands that are supported. So you can have one, two, three, three operands are supported for by uh, uh, Intel, and you can use just uh, ten operands for uh, I don't know for some kind of uh, custom uh, processor. To remove some no, no operations or, or blocks, what's about timing problems with the running code? So timing problems, uh, like so, so time time you optimized code um, runs even faster. I don't know how it react on the original. Uh -huh, so yes, if you optimize code, uh, basically it should run faster. Uh, so you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> You're wondering uh, how this uh, works uh, if you have some protections like Armadillo or something that uh, uses instrumentation based on the child that is executing or... If, if you talk to hardware and, and, and when the software is too fast, the hardware comes, comes with you anymore. Uh, excuse me, I don't... Uh, I didn't hear you well. Uh, especially if you talk to hardware and your code is optimized, Code runs too fast for the hardware anymore. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I don't execute any code. This is pure uh, static uh, deobfuscation. Okay, it's just for reading better code. Yeah. So okay. when you write it back to the assembly, you can execute it as it uh, it it will execute on the, your processor, and if it's optimized, then it should run faster. Okay. 
Any other questions? Yeah, Mike. Uh, first of all, a good talk. Thanks very much. Um, what I wonder about is if you if you purely 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 do your analysis static, um, how do you actually find out which path of the opaque predicates are taken, and how how deep is the level of opaque predicates that you can solve? So, so given given that you have like a set carry instruction or something like that, it's uh, going to be pretty simple. But you can think of uh, a function that is way more like uh, Obstructed. Yeah, uh, I was actually surprised when some of the condition jumps were optimized. Uh, for example, end destruction. Uh, end destruction was uh, like seven instructions above the conditional jump, and end destruction sets uh, overflow flag. So if you have somewhere down uh, over, uh, jump overflow, it will take just a single path. So the opaque predicates analysis is based on the semantics and tainting analysis that is uh, reconstructed for each uh, instruction. Uh, if you, uh, so all these algorithms are uh, layered. So uh, first you run uh, control flow optimizations, then you uh, run uh, data optimizations, then you run instruction optimizations. So if uh, you make a loop around it, uh, at some point uh, the code will uh, be static. Uh, no changes will happen, and in that case, uh, this is when the algorithms will stop. Oh, all the yeah. tainting, all the uh, opaque predicates code uh, is just, uh, uh, there is no uh, single uh, opaque predicates removal, but it's based on that code removal. So uh, if it's possible to uh, make an equation uh, that is solvable, if you have a conditional jump that uh, depends on uh, a set of flags, uh, you iterate uh, in, uh, through, the, uh, f to, through the basic block and find the first instruction that actually taints the, uh, this code. So uh, you have that instruction. Uh, you calculate taint information for that instruction. And uh, the great thing about the mentioned uh, XML file is that it gives you some, uh, it gives you all the flags that are constant. So if they are always set or always uh, false. If you have undefined flags, and you have a jump, a condition jump that depends on the undefined flags, then it's not possible to uh, solve this problem. Okay, and um, given that um, you just, it's, just, it's just like pretty much a simple kind of register tracking which you do. Yeah. Right? It's so the XML, file is, the XML file also contains like a description of all the, uh, of all the information that you need to do something like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, uh, this XML file is used for like for building this assembler. So you have uh, all the opcodes, all the prefixes associated with that opcode, all the hidden and visible op uh, operands. So uh, for example, pop instruction, uh, you will have that it taints also uh, ESP register. Uh, you will also have all the flags it doesn't uh, or does uh, uh, taint. So basically you get uh, all the semantic information from the XML file. So you can do uh, all the optimizations and taint analysis based on the semantics of a single uh, instruction. Cool, thanks. Okay.